Welcome back to my theology channel, Orthodox Theology. Uh, I want to talk about uh, how people will say, we, we fall into saying things like Cappadocian Fathers, okay? And really what that means and what that doesn't mean, okay? So Cappadocian Fathers, when we say the Cappadocians do this, Cappadocian Fathers this, Cappadocian Fathers that, this is purely an academic exercise. Okay, what do I mean by that? There is in the church feast days for the saints, right? We do not have, for example, the feast of the Cappadocians. That feast day does not exist. We do, however, have the feast day of the three holy hierarchs in January. Okay, that's St. Gregory the Theologian, St. Basil the Great. They are both Cappadocian fathers. And then St. John Chrysostom. Okay, so not the three that we normally think of in terms of St. Gregory of Theologia and St. Gregory of Nyssa and St. Basil the Great. And this becomes important because this connotation of Cappadocian Fathers is truly a modern academic ex exercise. It's simply not how the church talks, okay? And so we, uh, what you'll find is people will look back, okay? What I mean by academic is this kind of historical um, way of understanding the fathers, they'll look back and they'll read through uh, these three, you know, quote unquote, Cappadocian fathers. And then they'll try to systematize uh, their points, what their, their writings together, right? And then they'll say something like, um, this is their Cappadocian triadology, okay? This is their Cappadocian theology. And they'll come up with these ways of explaining their writings in a way that the church simply doesn't, right? The church doesn't analyze saints this way. It doesn't talk about saints this way. It doesn't group saints together this way. Because if it did, then there would be a Cappadocian feast day, but there isn't, okay? And the problem comes in trying to, uh, with this purely academic modern way of viewing the fathers, creates these, these pockets, these pocket systems. Okay, so this is what the Cappadocians said about the Trinity or about Christ, Christology or hypostasis or whatever. This is what St. Maximus said about it. Okay, uh, and, and St. Sophronius, and, and and this is what Paul Moss says about it. So now you have these kind of disjointed pockets. When the church is is, is under, not understanding it as this is the Cappadocian model, this is the Paul Moss model, but this is the truth. Okay, there's one truth. And all the fathers are explaining the same truth. Okay, so there isn't a Cappadocian method. There isn't a, Maximi, a, a St. Maximus method. There was an Apollomite method. Um, there was just orthodoxy, okay? And, the, and this becomes extremely important because we, we must not fall into the academic, systematic, analytical, you know, philosophical way of understanding, of, tr of trying to like look back and kind of recreate the wheel, so to speak. Certainly, uh, St. Gregory of Theologian, St. Basil the Great, and St. Gregory of Nyssa did not consider uh, themselves be writing some systematic kind of, uh, you know, theory or, or understanding of, of, of orthodoxy. They're simply writing orthodoxy, right? And if we, you know, look at St. Kirill of Alexandria, he says, you know, that nothing from him is new. He is simply following the fathers that come before him. And, and this, this is really, really important because if we were to look, you know, it's going around now that the Cappadocians used Father, used God to refer to the Father. Okay. First of all, that's not true. Um, St. Gregory, the theologian in Oration 29 and Oration 30, both refer to, he uses both, in both of those, he refers to the divinity as God. Okay. All theos, actually. He uses all theos to refer to the divinity. So it's no longer not even about persons, not even about one of the persons of the Trinity. It's about the divinity. It's about the nature. And then in his second oration on the sun, he uses God, Otheos, to refer to the Trinity. Okay, so th this idea that um, the Cappadocians primarily use God, and that's another thing, though. They, they will, initially, they'll say, uh, God only means Father. And then they'll say, oh, no, God primarily means Father. Then they'll say, oh, well, uh, some people in history, you know, meant that God uh, meant father, you know, it's, they try to, they retreat, constant goalpost moving, constant re retreat. Okay. And another place where we see this, this kind of looking back and trying to academically recreate and academically understand and articulate what's going on in the church is uh, a perfect example is female deaconesses. Okay. In Alexandria. 
And so, I guess at one point there were female deaconesses. Okay, we no longer have that, and we don't need to go back to an earlier mode where we had female deaconesses because they served a particular purpose that no longer is a function which we require because we don't baptize people uh, naked anymore. We baptize people with clothes on. So they initially were served to uh, used to baptize women because women were naked when they got baptized, and so this was seen as a compromise and then that that practice fell out of favor and we no longer have female deaconesses but if we were to look back and say oh well this was something done in in the history of the church in the past so it's totally fine to do this is not a good way of, of articulating and understanding orthodoxy okay certain things happen in a particular way another great example is meophysite language the church used meophysite language but now has formulated into using diaphysite language because it is less ambiguous and less problematic Okay, so trying to go back and say, this is the Cappadocian model, this is the Cappadocian language, okay, then, then you, if you were to say that uh, the Cappadocians had, um, and again, it is a purely academic exercise to think this way. The church does not think this way whatsoever, okay? But if we were to go in and say, oh, well, the Cappadocians spoke this way and they thought these things, you know, about the monarchy of the father or how Otheos only means the, only means the father, and then we go and read something like St. Maximus, where in uh, number 70, I believe it's 76 in the second century on the sun, he says, Otheos incarnate, right? Othe he uses Otheos, God incarnate. So is the father incarnate now, right? The other option is, is St. Maximus disagreeing with the Cappadocians, so-called Cappadocian fathers? Uh, it just falls apart. Right. And, the, you know, or, or is, is there a development of doctrine? Right. Is St. Maximus and St. Sophronius, are these people developing the doctrine in, in, in a very uh, real distinct way that's now different? So do we have two theologies? What's, you know, so we have to, we have to just totally move away from that. We have to totally move away from, from this kind of uh, academic, historical, uh, systematic understanding of things. And look at what the church actually says and what the church actually does. Okay, there's no Cappadocian feast day. I don't, I, I, if, if someone is out there and they're saying, this is the Cappadocian theology, this is Cappadocian triadology, they're just wrong. They, they are not thinking in, in the proper mindset of the church. They're thinking in a modern academic mindset, which has no link to the, to the, to the life, the, the, the pastoral life of the church, right? And again, that's, that's a big part is when we talk about theology, when we try to articulate difficulties in the fathers, it is for a pastoral reason. It is not an academic exercise. It's not some kind of intellectual exercise. So, that's what I'm getting at here. When we look back at, and we, and we <clears throat> when we look back at certain fathers and we try to create these systems, this is the Cappadocian model. This is the St. Maximus model. This is the Polemite model. This is what, this is Cappadocian, you know, triadology. These are just academic systems wholly outside the church, right? This is not how the church talks. Uh, I would recommend reading, I mean, obviously read the fathers and I would recommend reading the Menaean. Um, if you look at the Menaean for January, which is when all of these fathers have their, have their feast day, Cappadocian occurs once, once, okay? And it is about Clement, okay? So there's no, uh, there's no talking about, the church does not talk about St. Gregory of Theologian, St. Basil the Great, and St. Gregory of Nyssa as Cappadocian fathers, as Cappadocians, it's purely academic. Okay, it's, 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 and it's, and it's extremely modern, okay? This idea of, of kind of, you know, grouping fathers into certain, you know, you know, systems and, and periods and, you know, ways of thinking. And this is not, I'm kind of rambling here. I'm, I'm, and I seem to be just, just saying, we're articulating the same thing over and over again, but I, I, I need to impress upon you you know, those of you who watch and those of you who listen, that that's, an, that's not a theological way. That's not a spiritual way of understanding the fathers of, you know, grouping them in these little, in these little pockets and then applying, uh, you know, academic modes of, of, oh, well, they said all this and they did this. So this must be their system, right? Do, do, do you see how that works? I'm reminded um, when I uh, went to music school, we have to study the Bach chorales. And so you study them and there are all these rules that you learn, no parallel fifths, no parallel octaves, certain chords work in particular ways. The, the, the two chord goes here, the five chord does this and the six chord, et cetera, et cetera. What's interesting is that Bach never used any of these rules. 
These are rules that were later created by an academic trying to understand what Bach did. Do you understand the difference? So when people say Cappadocian triadology, Cappadocian's this, the, et cetera, it's some academic trying to systematize in, in, a, in a very inappropriate way what, what the fathers are writing. And I would just stick to the Menaean. I would stick to what the church actually says. I would, I would, I want to impress upon you the mode in which the church actually thinks and teaches people to think, and it's not this. It's not whatever that is, right? Cappadocian this, St. Maximus this, Palmite this. It's not that. That is purely university academic uh, sophistry. You know, it's 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 so outside the scope of the church that we 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 have to crucify this thought. We have to just totally take it and crucify it and get rid of it because it's not going to be helpful. You're going to create. You're gonna pit fathers against each other. You're going to be trying to understand why this father says something this way and this father says something that way and not, and, and be like, well, don't they contradict and don't they disagree? And it's not, this is not an appropriate way of going about reading the fathers and trying to understand them. So just wanna go over that uh, before we get into kind of in the, ne the next couple of things where I, I am gonna to be touching, I did touch a little bit on St. Gregory just now, how he uses all theos to refer to the divinity and all theos to refer to the trinity okay so anyone who says that he uses all theos only to refer to the father is just wrong it, it's just wrong. i will show you the quotes okay uh, uh oration 29 and 30 and the second oration on the sun um those are the those are the citations so we'll go over that in more detail and we'll go over um saint maximus's a treatise on the Lord's Prayer, where he says that, that the, you know, the Son is the name of the Father in substantial form, and the Spirit is the kingdom of the Father in substantial form. So when you say Father, you are saying the Trinity. Um, you cannot say Father without thinking of a Son, because there is no Father without the Son, and you can't say Son without there being a Father, because you cannot be a Son without a Father. Okay, so this kind of hyper honing in, trying to think of one person without the others is, uh, is leading to this kind of erroneous thinking. Uh, so again, thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll get into those things in the future. Um, just please, please, please remember that when someone says Cappadocian this, Cappadocian triadology, it's an acad this is purely an academic exercise and that's not how the church talks. So God bless and have a good weekend.